Now, Lisa Faulkner had always dreamed of starting her own family, but was left devastated when doctors told her she'd never be able to carry children. Well, Lisa refused to give up hope, so instead went on a very different path to motherhood and adopted her daughter Billy 12 years ago. And she joins us now as she talks about her struggle in a new book. And here it is, meant to be. Lisa, it's lovely to see you. And this book, you say, is for anyone who's found themselves facing the unexpected in life. Yeah. I wanted to write a book that gave a little bit of hope, that there was a bit of sunlight at that journey of infertility is a really hard one. Yeah. Or just when people start trying to have babies and then it doesn't quite go to plan and it goes from being, oh, we're just going to try and see what happens to, OK, rigid trying, mm. and then that doesn't work. Um, and, you know, IVF and everything else didn't yeah. work. So mm. I just wanted... To to be a hand to hold for those people, to, for a ray of sunlight that there is positivity and there is hope and, you know, there are ways to, other ways to have a family. It helps that you kept a diary from a very young age. Yeah, it's really funny. I, I have written a diary since I was about 10 or 11. I thank Adrian Mole, I think, because I think it was probably from That's reading right. him yeah. that I thought, oh, I'll write a diary. So I had diaries from then um, up until probably about 35. Really? Yeah. yeah. So, so this, I mean, this sort of journey to becoming a mother is, has been a tricky one for you, and this is what it's all about. And, you know, to begin with, you sort of, like everybody, you spend most of your life trying not to get pregnant. Suddenly you're like, <laughs> right, now I'm ready to have a baby, let's go. And it didn't happen. And you did fall pregnant to begin with, and then that came with its own health implications, didn't it? Yeah, I, I eventually, I got pregnant and... I, I wasn't it sort of we were trying and I was so excited and to have that stick that fertility that pregnancy stick that said yes it was like mm. um, I still have it actually which is really funny and um, it ended up that I had an ectopic mm. and I didn't understand what was happening to me I was on set I was filming and literally passed out and had to tell people yeah. was rushed to hospital and when I got there they everyone kept saying well, it's an ectopic pregnancy. So because it still had pregnancy in the title, I thought that it, I was still pregnant, that right. they could maybe move it. They said it was in the wrong, growing in the wrong place and I had no idea that it wasn't viable. And then I passed out and I had to have a tube taken out and it all sort of spiralled from there. But that moment of feeling that I was pregnant yeah. and it was amazing and then it was, ah, was just, you know, it's shattering. Well, yeah. that's what then started the um, the rounds. I mean, you tried everything. You tried Clomid, that's a, a miracle drug. Yeah. Um, three rounds of IVF, uh, which is incredibly expensive. And as we've spoken about this so many times on here, you know, that the, the, if it doesn't work at the end of it, you're so deflated yeah. because you have to work so hard f with IVF. Um, for you, you then say you almost became manic, obsessed with pregnancy. I think it was really difficult and I think anyone going through IVF will understand that moment where you build up all your hopes and almost you put your trust into a doctor and it's a bit like you can be carried along on a sea of medication and everything for a while and you go, I'm doing everything right and then it doesn't work. And everyone else in my round yeah. got pregnant. And the feeling of failure at something that you think well, all the, the drugs are there, this is all what I should be able to do now, was just crippling and I felt... I did feel like a failure for a very long time and I think it was a very lonely place. Even though I have the most amazing family and the most amazing friends, it, I am sure every, anyone out there would know that feeling where you just feel lonely and a bit rubbish. <laughs> so really when, rubbish. So feeling all of that but still having that hope that one day it might happen, when you were finally told by one of those doctors that you've put all your faith in that actually this is not going to happen, yeah. how does that moment finally feel? Um, it, was, it was very strange to, to go and sit, to sit there at the doctor and he was an amazing, amazing man. He still is my hero, Mr Taranisi. And he said to me, I can do everything, but I can't do the magic. Yeah. That's the magic that happens inside you, which was great. And he said, so I'm letting you go. And I remember thinking, oh, OK, but I could have scrabbled together, got some more money and I could have tried again. And I went back to see him when I was writing the book because I hadn't written in my diary about the IVF for some reason, maybe because it was just so hard. And I said to him, after crying, thinking I was fine, but crying at him, I said, why did you let me go? Why did you know? And he said, because I could see you were done. You were emotionally done. Mm. And I thought I was giving to the world this amazing... I'm fine and I'm going mm. through it all and I'm coping. 
and obviously I wasn't at all. And I was in this spiral of why, why is it not working and what do I do next? So once you've, once you've heard that news um, and the doctor, the expert, the man you've put, <sighs> you know, sort of all your trust in says, I'm letting you go. Yeah. Um, how easy a step is it to adoption? It's not an easy step to adoption at all. And it took a long time. It took years to get to that that bit. Um, I looked at surrogacy, I looked at all sorts of things of um, adoption sort of overseas and in America and it was actually my um, ex-husband who is a great friend who said to me, I don't grow a baby, you hand me a baby and I love that baby. What, oh, that's what would be the difference? Yeah. And I actually, it was that thing that I thought, yeah, what is the difference actually? Yeah, so and true. I love my godchildren, I love my nieces, I love my friends, my family. And that capacity to love, I thought, well, that's all you need to start it off. Yes, the journey is a difficult one. But that was where I decided to go and it felt right with me, even asking it at four o'clock in the morning. Mm. It was that, yes. And then along comes Billy. Yeah, well, I mean, the adoption process is a hard process yep. and there for a reason. And I think we did eight months of a home study report where they look into your whole life mm. and it's very much... Th it's like a counselling session all the time and a lot of workshops. Um, and then you sit and you wait on a list until they match you with a child. And I was very, very lucky and I have the most beautiful daughter. Yeah, you do, and she's 12 now. She is. She's 12, and you're very open about all of this, yep. right from right from the get-go. You know, you, you're a mother, but you're a friend of hers as well. She's read the book, hasn't she? She has read the book. And she asked you a question she, from this, and a, quite a poignant question, actually. She did. She said to me, we got to the IVF chapter, and she went, well, aren't you pleased that the IVF didn't work? Because otherwise you wouldn't have had me. And I... So it was a bit stark and I went, actually, Billy, yes, I am. I am really pleased because without, without that not working, I wouldn't have her. And yeah. she is an absolute ray of sunshine. She is just, you know, yes, it, parenting a teenager isn't easy and there are ups and downs, but I wouldn't change it for the world. There you go. I really wouldn't. <laughs> and, oh, um, nice. and so <laughs> uh, for, within your... This is um, obviously a, an incredible emotional story um, in the book. Um, Lovely happy endings as well, which is great because we know John so well yeah. cooking uh, cooking in here and in, in our kitchen. And then uh, last Christmas, um, he proposed. He did. Which was... Uh, Thank you. Do you know what you're doing? We've set a date, but I really haven't thought about it all and we've got to really, really start thinking about it. But it goes... The time goes so quickly. So quick. We said it's autumn. He asked me at Christmas and I'm now like, oh, gosh, I've got to get it sorted out. Um, but it's really, I'm so happy and it's really lovely and a complete surprise. He oh, floored me. So nice. You get someone else to do the cooking on your wedding day, though. Yeah, not, <laughs> neither of us will be in No <laughs> way, no way. But if we do want to see you cooking, we can do because John and Lisa's weekend kitchen is on Sundays, isn't it? That's ITV. Right. Yeah. So that's 9.25 in the morning. Yeah. So we can see you cooking there. You can. Um, good luck with the book and well Thank done you. you. It's a lovely Thanks thing so to much. Do. Thank you. Thank you.